Hey, 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 Jake Cake here. I want to thank you for sharing part of your day with me. Well, another week and another episode. This is going to be the 11th of the year. I'm super excited because we are building on momentum. We are making strides, not only to get back into, you know, good standing in our leagues, but get back to above 500 and even better, making sure we are going to be in playoff contention. I know we're just about halfway over with the regular season, at least before we get to the playoffs of fantasy baseball. So this is a good time to think about where we are, what we might need to do, and a little bit of investigation as to who on our team we can drop, who we just have to let go of, you know, regardless of the expectations, regardless of the keeper status, regardless of of the percentage owned. But in any case, we're gonna start with the ESPN leagues this week. We're gonna start with the South Harmon Institute of Technology. We ended up losing seven categories to nine categories to two categories. At this point in the year, we are such a far cry from where we were last year, and we're actually in the championship game last year, obviously not at this point in time, but we were going head to head with the top guy. And when you look at the standings, or at least from what I remember from last year to this year, it's flipped, not 100%, but there are some people that were lower last year. Now they're on top, which is good for them. The loss this week, not the worst thing in the world, but definitely not something we wanted to become a habit. I did have some pauses like we talked about. Luis Rengifo got me five stolen bases. That was great. Tyler Glasnow got me 21 strikeouts between his two starts. There were some other stat lines that I really want to talk about, but let's group Elias Diaz, Bryce Terang, Lane Thomas, Freddie Freeman, and Francisco Lindor all together and say that they all had at least 11 total bases, which is great. Now, unfortunately, we did talk about how good the strikeouts were for Mr. Tyler Lesnow. However, he also had a really bad start against my Yankees on Sunday night. So between Lugo... Medina, and Tyler Glasnow, that did not help my ERA or my whip. But those weren't the only pitchers to let me down. Jose Alvarado and Andrew Kittridge both had blown saves. The ads and drops. We we finally had to drop a few guys that just were not performing. But let's, let's get to the ads first. We did add Brandon Nimmo, who is a walk machine. So that was good for us. We also added Luis Medina, again, because we thought he was going to have a good matchup. We thought he was going to do decent, but... Athletics can never have anything nice. We also added Caleb Ferguson, who has starting pitcher and relief pitcher eligibility, so I can slot him in, get some cheap wins, some holds, and some saves, along with some strikeouts along my ERA and my whip. Finally, we picked up Alec Burleson. Burleson? Burleson? Anyway, he's an outfielder for the Cardinals. He's been on a tear as of late, doing nothing but barreling the ball, so good for him. I'm glad we were able to get him on our team. As far as the drops, we did drop Tommy Pham. He got hurt. Um... This next one, uh, I feel bad, but at the same time, I mean, it is what it is. We had to drop Kyle Harrison. Very promising. He's doing decent. Rookie year on a team that's really not giving him a whole lot of run support, but in any case, we end up dropping him. I do have him in another league, but um, in Cats League, he's just not doing it for me. We also did drop Davis Schneider, who just, again, was, was kind of falling apart. Um... You know, losing some starts, but also just not finding the base pass. And finally, Josh Lowe. That one was probably the one that I was up in the air most about because he had such a good year last year with stolen bases, with home runs, obviously running um, around the bases to score those runs. So um, it, it bothers me that I did release him because I was like thinking to myself, you are definitely going to have a great opportunity to not be a platoon person, but to be the guy now that Luke Rayleigh is gone. And, I mean, yeah, he did have the oblique injury, so that's part of it, but I had to release him. Who knows? I may very well be picking him up. I don't know. But in any case, the South Harmon Institute of Technology team fell into hard times this week with this loss. So now we're going to move to the Peach Creek Purgatory team. A few weeks ago, this team was on a skid, but we found our way. And this week, we continued finding our way as we were going to come out with a victory 860 to 694. Now, I do want to preface the people who did well for me with the fact that the guy I was facing, our girl, only started four of their 12 pitchers. So it looks like I won by, what, 170? 
yeah, had he started all eight remaining pitchers, I probably would have lost. So I lucked out. Nolan Gorman was able to score 56, and he was your leading scorer. Max Freed scored 55, and Framber Valdez scored 54. Some of the guys that didn't do well for us. Cooper Criswell. Criswell? Chrysler? Mary Chrysler? Anyway, he only scored four points for me. Then Freddie Peralta could not find the strike zone, had five walks, and got me three points. Marcus Stroman, my Yankee, woo, got me two points. And Braxton Garrett got me negative two points. I am so glad I did not need all of these points this week because you four stink. Despite making me mad, Cooper Criswell was one of the ads this week, along with Nick Martinez, who has shifted to a long relief role and is now actually the recording of this being Tuesday, the setup follower, so the bulk guy uh, for the Reds. So that's great because he does not burn a start and he still gets to pitch and potentially get wins. Hopefully he gets wins. We also picked up Luis Ortiz, who is another bulk guy who did very well for me for the Pirates this past week. And also Paul DeYoung, who took place of my current shortstop, who is on the IL. And I'm very happy because the first day he was on my team, he had a home run. So speaking of people who have done well for me, we talked about them guys, Luis Ortiz, obviously Paul DeYoung. But now these guys we're going to talk about on the drops did not do well for me. And that included Tommy Pham. He was doing well for me, but he got hurt and wanted to fight the entire Brewers team. In any case, we also dropped Cooper Criswell because, sir, you didn't pitch well. And Ron Yarbrough. They're just not using Ron Yarbrough like they used to. Or the Dodgers just don't need him as that long relief guy, which is very disappointing because he was kind of a secret weapon for me. The next team we're going to talk about, the last ESPN team. The Russell My Jim Jams team. This week, I end up coming out with a win 10 categories to 6 categories. No ties. Thankfully, uh, I was able to move up a little bit in the standings. But let me tell you about some of my stars. We're going to have to read off their stat lines because they were great. Lourdes Gurriel, 2 home runs, 4 extra base hits, and 7 RBIs. Jose Altuve, five runs, one home run, five RBIs, and a stolen base for good measure. C.J. Abrams, one home run, three extra base hits, five RBIs, and two stolen bases. Where he talked about Luis Rangifo, he had five stolen bases. And then finally, Kevin Gosman, who won me those final two categories. He had a complete game, shut out, 10 strikeouts with the win. So that's phenomenal. Some of the guys did it poorly for me. Really no one. Because... I was able to win all these categories. The offense really did pick it up. The pitching did well enough for me to win. So pretty happy about that. But something we will also have to read off is the number of ads and drops because we were busy this week. The ads did include Mark Canna, Jamison Tyon, Fernando Cruz, Isaiah kiner falefa Trevor Williams. Yes, I know he's hurt, but I put him on my IL because he was doing very well. Unfortunately, Surprise, probably have to drop him this week because I don't know when he's going to be back. Josh Bell, and again, Isaiah Kina Kavala. Kavala. Falafel. Uh, now, the drops did include Alec Marsh, Tommy Pham, Jose Soriano, that one kind of stung, James and Tyon, Mark Canna, uh, Kiner Falafa, Falafel, and Austin Adams. That's very unfortunate. I had to release Austin Adams because he was doing very well for the athletics, but. Kind of just ran into a buzzsaw, which was being overworked because he, uh, I think behind uh, Ursage or Ur Eckridge, uh, both of those guys led their team in holds. And now Eckridge is down or Ursage, he's down. Uh, so Austin Adams is essentially having to work more, uh, which is unfortunate because Mason Miller is phenomenal. So we're, we're going to see where that goes. Um, so, yeah, essentially two and one in the ESPN leagues. I'm pretty excited about that. It was a pretty good week overall. Let's go ahead and get to the other leagues. We're going to talk about the cheese weasels now. Last week, we were at 123 points. This week, unfortunately, we are down to 119.5 points, but we are still in third place, so that's great. We're still in striking distance with many categories, and we've actually taken over in several, including holds, saves, wins, of course, strikeouts. Speaking of the batting categories and being within striking distance, there are four categories where I am between two and seven runs, hits, RBIs, whatever it may be, behind. The most is seven. So I'm definitely with in striking range. I'm excited to see where some of these next few weeks will take us because that then again will prove to us 
who we need to add, who we need to drop, and what we need to focus on. We'll be able to scale back some of the pitching because we are leading in multiple categories there, like we talked about, and try to really focus mainly on the hitting to get back up into even higher categories. So my thought process is continue to lead in pitching, get enough of a lead, especially in the strikeouts and wins, to where we can just rotate one or two pitchers every week. Maybe Paul Skeen, Ty Glass. Now those two would be great. Aaron Nola, who's already on our team. So those three guys right there, just week after week after week going for me, getting the strikeouts, hopefully getting the wins, lower my ERA, lower my whip, and then the rest will be relievers. Hitting-wise, we definitely need some help. There are a few lines that I want to go over this week for guys who really did help me. First of all, Ryan Mountcastle. Yes, he was selling the waiver wire. We talked about how there were some big names on this waiver wire that you could pick up and drop and see at any point in time. He had three home runs and eight RBIs for me this week. Unfortunately, he only did hit the ball five times. Luckily, three of them were home runs, and unfortunately for me, I was going against him in another league. Next, we have Bryce Durang, who had three stolen bases and a 364 batting average. Again, helping me take the lead in stolen bases is what this man is on our team for. Finally, Jordan Alvarez is getting going seven runs, eight RBIs, and a 391 batting average. Sir, I need you to wake up and do more, not only for my team, I hate to say this, but for the Astros, because if the Astros are going to get going, especially without Kyle Tucker, Jordan Alvarez needs to be the nucleus that gets that thing going and growing. Aaron Nola got me a win, a zero ERA, and a point. 2-9 whip. Thank you, sir. Follow Tyler Glass now. 21 strikeouts. Unfortunately, you did have two losses for me. So, come on, man. Now, as far as some of the people who didn't do well for me, Shay Langoliers, you had one hit out of 17 at-bats this week. That's not going to do it for me. You probably found your way off my team. Also, the relievers are giving up way too many hits, which will lead to runs, which lead to higher ERA and whip and blown saves. That's not what I need. I need Jose Alvarado, Camilo Duvall, the Kirby Yates. I need you guys to get it going. I need you guys to get focused. And come on, guys. We're leading in them. Let's pad our stats a little more. The ads and drops this week are very short. We added Ryan Mountcastle, who already has paid dividends for me, and Hunter Gaddis. Hunter Gaddis has starting pitcher and relief pitcher eligibility, so I'll pick up some cheap wins, some holes, and saves while getting strikeouts, lowering my ERA, and lowering my whip, and hopefully not picking up blown saves. The drops did include Matt Stram and Josh Bell. We're now going to move to the Funky Junkie Joker Monkeys. Unfortunately, this week we did lose 478 to 400. The guys that did well for me included Nick Pavetta with 31, Jose Altuve with 29, Nolan Gorman with 27, and Brian Wu with 26. However, the guys that did nothing to help me included Walker Bueller, who got me 6 points, Salvador Perez, who got me 5 points, Freddie Peralta, who got me 2 points, and both Bryce Miller and Pablo Lopez got me .5. Now, looking at what they normally got, or at least what they were projected to get, I would have picked up another 10 points from Bueller, 17 points from Peralta, and 16 and 14 respectively from Pablo Lopez and Bryce Miller. Now that would have been another 50 plus points. That would have made me feel better, and it probably would have made the score obviously look a little better, but that makes me so mad that I have to continue to wonder, maybe I should have started I don't know, Tristan McKenzie, maybe I should have started Logan Allen, maybe I should have started Bailey Falter, none of which are on my team, because they're not as good as those guys. Well, JK, they obviously pitched better than the guys that you had. Yeah, I know. That's what makes me frustrated, the fact that I even have to think about that. I digress. The ads and drops for this week were... Heavily influenced by having to pick up pitching that did not burn starts. We added Nolan Gorman, which was great. J.J. Bladé, Bowden Francis, who is a bulk guy for the Toronto Blue Jays. He is going to be able to probably go behind Uriel Rodriguez until Uriel Rodriguez picks up enough steam from getting back from being injured to maybe pitch an entire five or six innings. Bowden Francis will be the bulk guy until then. With Manoa going down, some of the other injuries, Bowden Francis might be pushed into action, which is not what we want. The final pickup was Luis Ortiz, who was the bulk guy like we talked about. Picked me up a few points for the Pirates, and he also will continue to be the bulk guy, unless the injuries for the Pirates pitching staff mount. And now the drops included Sedane Rafaela, 
Tommy Pham, Luis Ortiz, and probably this one that frustrated me most, Andrew Abbott, did not think he was going to do well. Of course he does well. When I start him, he does poorly. When I don't start him, he does well. When I drop him, he has one of the better games. So, go figure. This drops me to 6-5. and five. I believe I'm in 6th spot right now, so not exactly where I want to be, but we are in the playoffs if they were to start today. That's the most important thing. Once we get towards the end of the season, that is going to be the main goal. Make sure we are in playoff position, at least enough to get in because anything can happen once we get into the playoffs. Speaking of anything can happen, we are going to the Kent Murphy Dingers now. Now in this league, it's been super frustrating. This is one I've been performing very poorly in. I've won two games this year. That is not, not what I expect. Not at all. But it is what it is. We have to keep going. We're not fully out of playoff contention. Uh, right now, we are 2-6, and six, I believe. We have a, a, a tie. Um, but after this past week, huh, we picked up another tie. <laughs> uh, so ties count as half a win. So right now, we're technically 3-6. and six. Again, not where we want to be, but... Better than 0-11, right? Um, so this week, it was close. It it, it was a ro roller coaster. Ro rocky roller coaster. Um, Monday through Thursday, I was leading like seven categories to one. I was like, woo, yeah, this is my week. Very quickly, that turned around because Friday, at the end of Friday, I was losing four categories to six categories. I'm like, how? How? Well, batting average... Uh, strikeouts, ERA, thanks, Yohanderon. Um, so, very frustrating. But uh, Saturday came and went, and I was then down three categories to seven categories. I'm like, oh, gosh. The really only one I could win, ones I could win, strikeouts, because he only had like one guy starting. I still had all my pickups. So, I could start several guys, but I had to be careful about my whip, because I was winning whip. I wasn't winning ERA, so as long as we got strikeouts, that was what mattered. We were also leading enough in wins I felt comfortable. He made it very close, though. We needed to pick up stolen bases. We weren't winning batting average. We were not winning home runs. He, like, tripled my home runs. Um, but we had to make a few moves. Now, let's go ahead and get to the ads and drops. Then, when we talk about some of these people that helped me it'll make sense so we did pick up hunter brown who had seven strikeouts he had a win and really held my era and whip we also picked up patrick sandoval not he didn't do well at all but he picked up enough strikeouts to help me a little bit finally we picked up bowden francis now bowden francis was the starter he pitched four innings no era or zero era very low whip picked up enough strikeouts again to help me in that category and didn't implode. So I'm very happy about that. So that helped me with the, the strikeouts and the wins. So now we have to move to the stolen bases as we discussed. And you would think Estre Ruiz was supposed to be my, my stolen bases guy. What a waste. Thyro Estrada, supposed to be a stolen bases guy. What a waste. So we had to pick up someone. Now, we got lucky. We had Lane Thomas. We had C.J. Abrams. Adolis Garcia or Adelis Garcia stole me a base, so that was great. But we had to pick up someone else, and David Hamilton was that guy. He hit a home run, but he also got me a stolen base. So I was able to eke out stolen bases by one, eke out wins by one, and eke out strikeouts by two or three, I believe. So it was very close. A 5-5 five to five tie put me at, again, not losing, but a situation where I did move up one spot in the rankings. Now let's talk about some of the guys that did well for me. Their stat lines are enough to make me have to read them off. Jose Altuve, five runs, a home run, five RBIs, and one stolen base. CJ Abrams, three runs, two home runs, five RBIs, and two stolen bases. Thank you, sir. Logan Webb, Cole Irvin, Jake Flaherty, Kyle Bradish, and Hunter Brown all got me wins and at least four strikeouts. There were a few of those guys that had upwards to eight or nine strikeouts, so that's great. Now some of the guys that didn't do well for me. Real Muto, just won the I.L. today. Two for 16, not going to cut it. Adelise Garcia, two for 23. You did steal me a base, so thank you. That was great. And Alec Bohm, three for 20. All combined, they went a whopping, what was that, uh, seven for 59, 
with a 118 batting average combined for three runs, one home run, two RBIs, and one stolen base. That's not going to cut it. Now, Reese Olsen, Patrick Sandoval, terrible starts, and Johan Duran. I really think I could have one ERA if Johan Duran did not blow up and let up X number of runs. I mean, he, he had a 40 ERA, so <sighs> that's very unfortunate. But we came out with a tie. It is what it is. Now let's go ahead and get to some of the other ads and drops. We added Spencer Steer. Yes, he's available. He's just performing very poorly after a very hot start to the year. We also picked up Yimmy Garcia. We talked about Hunter Brown. Talked about Patrick Sandoval. Talked about Bowden Francis. And talked about David Hamilton. Now the drops. Garrett Stubbs. We picked him up last week in hopes to get a stolen base. Didn't work out for us. Ben Brown. Because you forgot how to pitch. Davis Schneider. And Matt Verling, those guys, hot starts, hot streaks, and then just fall off the face of the earth. Reese Olsen, because you forgot how to pitch. Hunter Brown, because I needed someone else to pitch for me. And finally, Spencer Steer. That was a hard one because he did very well for me. And he quietly has 40 runs and I think 11 stolen bases. But he's batting like 220. So not the greatest stat line, but... He did help me. He ended up having a home run, three runs scored, and five RBIs for me this week. So that was great. Thank you so much for that, sir. But uh, need some stolen bases. Need some more stolen bases. So in any case, now let's talk about some of the people you might want to add. Um, Drew Thorpe, big prospect for my Yanks. Now he is pitching for, I believe, the White Sox. So that is something to look forward to if you do have you know interest in that. We're going with another pitcher, Chris Paddock. Started him yesterday, paid off well for me. Later this week of a two-start week, he gets the athletics. Could be something to look forward to. Temper expectations. Bailey Ober, if somehow he's available, he is available in some of my leagues because he has forgotten how to pitch. Also gets the athletics later this week, so... Again, something to look forward to. Simeon Woods Richardson has a pretty good matchup with the Athletics. It's a Friday matchup. So, again, enough to get you boosted for the weekend or if you need some pickups um, to boost whatever bad matchups you have. Maybe it's a bad matchup Simeon Woods Richardson has or bad start. You still have some time to recover over Saturday and Sunday. So, uh, the Twins pitchers. Going against the athletics. That's that's my that might be who you want to look at. As far as hitters, Alec Burleson doing very well for the Cardinals. Also with Real Muto going down, you might want to look at Garrett Stubbs. He has a little bit of speed. He's not gonna be a, a burner, but has a, a tad bit of power. He he could be something to, to look at. And finally, Isaiah Kaina Falefa. This guy has second, third, and outfield eligibility. May also pick up shortstop at some point in time, depending on how Bichette is going. You know, could play him at DH and put Falefa there. But in any case, he has played there before. That's why I put that out there. Good utility man has been hitting pretty well. I'm not going to be a, a stolen base guy, but he's going to get you some hits and get you some knocks here and there. I'm probably not a home run kind of guy, but in a struggling offense like the Blue Jays, any little type of spark could ignite that entire offense. You can't hold Vladdy. You can't hold Bichette. You can't hold Springer. You can't hold some of these guys down for that long and not anticipate some explosion at some point in time. So hopefully those were helpful. Those waiver wire ads are ones that I'm going to consider on my teams, and hopefully you're going to consider on your teams as well. Unless you're in a league with me, then don't pick them up because I want to pick them up. But in any case, we are confident in this momentum that we have. We're going to continue it moving forward. And next week, we will talk about some more wins and some more, again, momentum to get into playoff contention. This is Jay Cake, and I want to thank you for sharing part of your day with me.